Good morning, Scotland. Good morning, social media land. I hope you're well. It is Thursday, the 14th of November, 2024. We are living in a country so convinced of its own dependence on its neighbour for handouts that it's blinding itself to its own wealth. We are a nation that attacks our fellow Scots if they dare to dream of a better future. And for those who fight for self-determination, those brave Scottish men and women fighting for the same cause, they can't even come together because some fly a blue political flag while others fly a yellow political flag. What is wrong with you, Scotland? Are we so obsessed with our own political addiction that we have lost sight of the national cause? Is one-upsmanship and finger-pointing the new norm instead of pushing forward for liberty? Let's break it down a bit, shall we? Unionist Scots have no positive argument for the union. They just attack, belittle, like loyal peasants in service to a union that couldn't care less about them. And then what? SNP supporters pointing finger at Alipa supporters, Alipa supporters returning the favour, shouting accusations of betrayal at one another. Residing in a toxic debate that does nothing for the cause at all. Some indie folk are so full of hatred, they say that they won't rest until Sturgeon and our so-called cabal are behind bars. How is that relevant to fighting for our freedom? Oh, because if she's gone, we can conform to your measure of how we fight for independence. Okay, yeah, that's good, isn't it? Back to Unionist Scots. They are so lost that they're fooling around in the dark just to find Westminster's boots to lick. They are so linked to the Union that their addiction is one of a psychological dependency where spittle flies from their mouth in anger when challenged on the Union with cries of NO SURRENDER! NO SURRENDER! No surrender from what? Because right now you're surrendering your children's future to a union that exploits their future. No surrender indeed. And yet our own politically addicted independence activists are doing similar things. Reaching in the dark for the next accusation to throw at the very people they should be standing shoulder to shoulder with. I have emails that expose the SNP as being compromised. I was touched inappropriately by Alex Salmond. He was a sleazebag. It's all the wrong energy, all aimed in the wrong direction. While you stand around shouting, you're ignoring the one thing that matters. If we could just get over ourselves, if we could just seize the chance to finally do some good for our country, we could stand up as one and tell the world, we are free Scots. We are free Scots. Our path forward is right in front of us, if only we would take it. We need an overlapping strategy of an international wing speaking to the UN and the EU, telling our story to anyone who will listen, pushing our historic constitution, our claim of right into a modern context, showing the world who we are and how we have been exploited. We need a united political movement where every pro-independence party comes together to form a Scottish government and a Scottish opposition, both focused on the same goal to build a better Scotland. Listen, politics can smash each other to pieces in Holyrood. That's the medium where policy is debated for Scotland. But outside this chamber, outside of Holyrood, politics needs to be united for the cause. Politics needs to get over itself and fight under the banner of liberty when they are not in Holyrood. And we also need a grassroots movement with a revolutionary mindset, one that tunes out the unionist noise and rises above the differences we have, coming together with behaviours and content to win the hearts and minds of the undecided. But we already have that, right now. And so many of you are too blinded by ego to move forward. If you want independence for Scotland, you just have to get over yourselves work together and take it in 2026. But we need to start now. The same old arguments have to stop. The same tired accusations have to end. And if the person beside you is wavering a different flag, then embrace them. Let them know that you are grateful that they're standing up for Scotland's freedom in the same way as you are. 
And when the dust settles and we have the Scottish pound in our banks and Scottish parties in Holyrood delivering policies funded by Scotland's wealth, then you can go back to arguing with each other if you truly must. I know I'll get backlash for saying all this, but deep down, you know it's true. Take a long, hard look in the mirror, Scotland. Look past your own shadow and see yourself for what you are. An activist who spends more time undermining their own cause than advancing it, all because you are so entrenched in hatred for the other factions. If you can't move past this, then go ahead. Keep posting memes about Nicola. Keep calling Alex a sleazebag. And when we lose even more of our wealth, when we are relying on English infrastructure just to get by, remember, it was your memes and your petty squabbles that got us there because you couldn't set aside your differences until after we're free. Get over the politics. Get over the politics. Neither Alapa nor the SNP will deliver independence in our lifetime if they don't recognise that this is a national cause, not a national policy. SNP, you are the government and you have a duty to govern. We know that you have pushed the limits of devolution and we are grateful for it. But change your strategy. Do what's right. Work with everyone to form a pro-Scottish government and a pro-Scottish opposition. Salvo. Liberation Scotland. Focus on fighting the international battle. Isn't that what you're doing anyway? Get our cause in front of the people on the global stage who can make a difference. All under one banner and believe in Scotland. Work together to mobilise our grassroots movement, our great people, our voices, our strength and our unity. Bring speakers from all parties and grassroots leaders to the stage to call for unity. Point the finger at the real enemy. We know who they are. We need a true spectacle of independence. But can you do this, Scotland? Can you? It was hope that united us in 2014, and it's hope that drives me now. I will continue to fight with those that fight for the same future, but will ignore those that direct their energy inwards. Those that do that are either blinded by hatred of their own people or our agent provocateurs set to undermine the cause. Before I go, I will ask you this. Is there too much water under the bridge for you to come together, to move past your feelings, to fight for your country, for your nation's freedom? Or are you just too entrenched like Scottish unionists, unwilling to see the good in your own people? Change has to start somewhere. Sursa. To the Alba. It's so beautiful. I feel I can't even explain this. You must stop this. I can't. I won't. You know what will happen. You need to join me. No one's gonna take me. Come to make things right You and I must fight for our rights You and I must fight to survive